Hello, and welcome to the archives. Uh, today, today I'm going to take a look at the second uh, data pack cycle in the Red Sands, or the second data pack in the Red Sand cycle, I should say. Uh, station one. At least I think it's station one. <laughs> yeah, it's station one. Uh, so we're going to have a look at those cards. Uh, we're going to jump right into it and have some fun. Here we have the first card, the Severnius Stim Implant. You see this wonderful artwork of a guy who's got this metal contraption stuck to his back, probably bolted into his shoulder blade, and a glowy bit here of his skin that I think it's injecting the stim directly into him. It is a hardware cybernetics, two credits to install, four influence cost, that is a hefty influence cost, um, seeing this outside of Anarch will likely be difficult, will likely be, um, it, w it would cost a lot. It's not going to say we're not going to see it, but it'll cost a bit. We have the ability on it, click, make a run on R&D or HQ, and trash two or more cards from your grip. Whenever you access cards from that server, access one additional card for every two cards trashed. Hmm. We have, sure, the implantation was fine, but it pumps burn. Did you think it wouldn't hurt? <laughs> uh, she, she got a point there. So yeah, this looks interesting. Um, there was a console, I think it's Obelisk, if I remember correctly, that increases your hand size depending on how many tags you have and there is that whole thing about runners having tags being benefit to them i can see um i can see this being good with that because you get a hand size that you've got like 12 15 cards in hand you can make a run and just trash most of your grip and look at a whole bunch of cards so yeah, it could be uh, it could be beneficial. Uh, I'm not used to playing that sort of runner, so I don't know exactly how good it would be. But other people out there will know. I think, however, this one. I remember reading something about it. Whenever you access cards from that server, access one additional for every two trash. I think that only applies to the end of the run. I think that's like sync BRE. It only applies until the end of that run. Uh, on to the next card. Here we have Clan Vengeance. A resource clan type. Three credits to install. Four influence again. Um, so seeing this outside of Anarch is unlikely. Uh, whenever you suffer any amount of damage, place one power counter on Clan Vengeance. Trash. Trash one card from HQ at random for each power counter on Clan Vengeance. Hmm. An eye for an eye. If you're lucky, that's all you'll lose. Mm-hmm. So this card, if it's in play, and it's not a unique, so you could have multiple in play. So that whenever you're suffering damage, um, placing power counters on it. Kind of making the corp leer... Oh, pardon me. <clears throat> Leery about doing damage to you. Hmm. I like this idea. And then trashing cards at random from HQ. If you get enough for their full hand, you can just be like, boop, goodbye hand. So that could be, uh, could be useful. All right, on to the next. Here we have Counter Surveillance. It is a resource clan. Three influence. Still pretty hefty. Uh, one credit to install. Click and trash, make a run. If successful, instead of accessing, pay X credits to access up to X cards from this server, if able. X is the number of tags you have. So the more tags you have, the more you have to pay when you use this. Flavor text of who watches the watchers? We do. Hmm. Clan is a big thing on Mars. I remember that. So that should be, uh, that could be interesting. Again, I'm not a super big Anarch player. 
Hmm. Hmm. All right. On to the next. Here we have Mobius, a run event, zero credits to play, one influence cost, uh, easy to splash around. Make a run on R and D. If successful, you may make another run on R and D when this run ends. If the second run is successful, gain four credits. Hmm. Now this, this I can see having some use in my Laramie deck. Hmm. Or any criminal deck, really. No, sorry. I was thinking something else. Laramie is the first time you make a successful run. Force a corp to draw a card. I was thinking you could make a run on R&D for a minute there. Uh, look at the card. Then, when it's successful, make another run immediately. And make them draw that card. Look at the one beneath it. Oh, for me. That's not how it goes. However, this I may have to include in my smoke deck that uses Top Hat. Because she could, if she's got enough money to make four runs on R&D. Because you can look at the top five cards. You play a Mobius for one of those runs. Immediately make another one. And then look at it. Look at the fifth card that you're not getting a chance to look to normally. Hmm. I like that idea. I may have to use this. Mm hmm. All right. On to the next. Here we have Los, a data hijacker. A criminal identity, zero link strength, 45 card minimum deck size, 15 influence. Gmod identity. He looks pretty tough. He's got all kinds of hoses connected up to his... Uh, his suit here. The first time the corp reses a piece of ice each turn, gain two credits. From code to profit in three easy steps. That, that seems like a good ability. The first time the corp reses a piece of ice each turn, gain two credits. So, if you're only making them res one piece of ice each turn. Oh! Oh, that would work too, yes. this That ability would work on the corpse turn as well. As well as on your turn. Yeah. So if you can... If you somehow are making them res, or if they res any ice on their turn, from, like, um, an accelerated beta test, or, uh, oh, maybe... Or a priority requisition, or any of those, like Eliza's toy box, or Oversight AI. I think Oversight AI does that. I may I may be wrong. Um, but yeah, for any of those that res the corp reses ice, uh, that would work for you then too. You'd gain too. Yeah, I'm digging that. I may have to make a deck with Los. He looks interesting. All right, on to the next. Here we have a shaper. Uh, system seizure card, event current, zero credits to play, one influence, easily splashable. This card is not trashed until another current is played or an agenda is scored. The first icebreaker whose strength you increase each turn does not return to its base strength until the end of the run. This I like because I like uh, ice in particular that you can boost up and it keeps that strength for the run so you're not having to boost it again um, it's one of the uh, one of the core components it's one of the core components that I have for my uh, smoke deck so I like this I like this a lot this would work good with my smoke deck because I've got dagger in there because it's cheaper to res or raise raise the strength of than the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. I like it. All right, on to the next. Here we have customized secretary. Program. Two credit install. One memory unit cost. Two influence. Not bad on the influence. No strength. 
because it's not an icebreaker. When you install Customize Secretary, reveal the top five cards of your stack. You may host any number of the revealed programs from your stack on it. Shuffle your stack. Click Install a Hosted Program, paying all install costs. That is good. Because if you've got a bunch in your in your stack, in the top part, you install this, you look at the top five cards, if you've got three programs, you immediately slap them down on uh, Customize Secretary, and they can be installed whenever you need them. They're ready to hand, pretty much. Huh. I like. I like this. Quite a bit, actually. Yeah. Build script. We've moved on to the next. Uh, build script. Um, it is an event that is neutral. Zero credit to play. We got a, a nice puzzle piece, prismatic looking rainbow thing going on here. Event. Gain one credit and draw two cards. One influence as well. Influence on a neutral card. But I can see why. For only one click, you gain a credit and draw two cards. That's pretty uh, pretty handy. That's like... Um, it's like clicking for a credit, but you get two cards off it too. Yeah. I can dig it. Alright. On to the next. We're into some court cards now. We have a Hoss Bioroid... Seder Adaptive Barrier. Four credits, two res, two strength, one influence. Seder Adaptive Barrier has plus one strength for each piece of ice protecting the server. End the run. Straight up end the run. That's fine. I like it. The more ice you stack on a server, the stronger this is. I can dig that. A nice nifty little honeycomb uh, barrier art here. I do like that. All right, on to the next. Here we have Noreen 2.0. Six credits to res, four strength, three influence. The runner can spend two sub or two clicks to break up to two subroutines on Noreen 2.0. Deal one brain damage, the court may draw one card. Followed by deal one brain damage, the court may draw one card. It is Codegate Bioroid AP. Flavor text of Submit. Huh. And it has this wonderful uh, wonderful lady holding a sword with a giant fire-breathing wolf at her side. I can, uh, I like that. In my Bioroid deck, this would definitely have a place. Six? Hmm, yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. On to the next card. Here we have Load Testing. Uh... It is an operation for Hospitaloid. Zero credits to play. When the runner's next turn begins, he or she loses a click. Five influence. So this ain't going out of HB anytime soon. Not unless the runner really, or the corp really wants to uh, play that. Flavor, flavor text from Rachel Giacoman of Trust Me, Most Corps Cannot Match the Performance of Our Brain Map Enhanced System. A homebrew rig doesn't stand a chance. I like it. You can just play that for zero credits and force a runner to only have three clicks next turn. That's that's handy. All right. On to the next. Here we have Bloom. It is an Ice Cogate Observer. Two credits, two res. Three strength. And... Two influence. Wonderful picture of a flower in a field of flowers. Ah, it has, you may install a piece of ice from HQ protecting another server, ignoring all costs. And another subroutine saying, you may install a piece of ice from HQ in the next innermost position, protecting this server, ignoring all costs. That can be handy. Especially if they let it fire, because then it's just like, it's just, it's blooming. It's, it's building things up. Hmm. I like it. And a two, 
a two res for three strength code gate. It may not end the run, but if they let it fire, then you get to put another piece of ice down right after them. <laughs> Something that they have maybe no way of countering, no way of knowing what it is. I dig that. Oh, well, yeah. All right, on to the next. Here we have another Jinteki card, Replanting. One credit, Operation Double. As an additional cost to play this operation, spend a click. Add one of your installed cards to HQ. Install two cards from, from HQ, ignoring all costs. So if you've got something that is like zero to res, uh, you can pop it back into your hand. And then install it again along with another card. It costs you two clicks, mind you. But, yeah, this... This I like because this would let you um, this would let you rearrange ice on servers uh, to better uh, to better uh, benefit you as need be. Hmm. Yeah, three influence on this as well. So fa fairly hefty uh, influence cost on that. All right, on to the next. Here we have CPC generator, an NBN card, zero credits to install an asset advertisement. The first time the runner spends a click to gain a credit each turn, not through a card ability, not through a card effect, gain one credit. Two to trash, three influence. The customer pays to use our service, and then the advertisers pay us to put ads on their screens. And then the customers pay us a premium to remove the ads. Welcome to the dream. <laughs> oh, NBN. You so silly. But yeah, that is a nice... Uh, if, you, um, if you're if you running the... Uh, what is it? Spark Agency? I think does all the advertisements. This, this fits right in there. Right in there. Okay. On to the next. Here we have Free Lunch. A Ice Cogate. Three Credit Res. Four Strength. Three influence. We have what looks like a yeah, it's like a table set. Uh, you know, wine glasses, the uh, the cover of the meal, a wine bottle, a candle. Hosted power counter. The runner loses a cl a credit. Two subroutines saying place one power counter on free lunch. So, as ice, this does not stop the runner at all. But at four strength, with two subroutines on it, the runner cannot afford to let this fire too many times. Because those power counters, it's a paid ability. At any point, the corp can simply go, nope, you lose credits. At any time, in the middle of a run. If, they, if, they, if they're figuring out their credits, uh, like down to the credit on the get through a server, and you have power counters on free lunch, then they need to take that into consideration and have even more money. Because you can just be like, boop, boop, boop. Yeah. I like this one a lot. This is going to see some play in my MB index. Definitely. Definitely. All right, on to the next. Here we have MCA Informant and Operation Terminal. Four credits to play it. After you resolve this operation, end your action phase. Install MCA Informant on a connection as a hosted condition counter with the text, the runner is considered to have one additional tag. The host connection gains click, two credits, trash this card. Two influence on this. Now the interesting thing is that um, I actually did a little uh, digging and talking with a couple people. This particular card um, is hosted on a connection. There is pretty much every card that has the word connection as a keyword is on the runner side. But there is one card that has connection on it that's on the corp side. So you could technically host this on a corp card, the one corp card, and 
in order to get rid of having that additional tag, the runner would have to run on that server and trash basically that card. However, that particular card does cost two to trash, and the runner will have to spend a click to make the run. So it does cost them a click and two to trash it anyways, but it also costs them more if they have to break through ice to do it. I like this card. This is kind of cool. But you can also throw it on one of their uh, connections and force them to trash it. This I could have used in a match that I was playing because the runner had like, like a ton of resources. Um, I could have thrown that on a connection and just made them made them trash it. it. It would have been nice. It would have been nice. Oh well. On to the next. Here we have Clyde Van Wright, a unique asset executive. Two credits to install or to res. Three credits to trash for the runner. Two influence. When your turn begins, the runner must pay one credit or trash the top card of the stack. You have two choices. Do what I asked or make me ask again. It's your choice. But if I have to ask again, it will go badly for you. Yeah, Clyde Van Wright doesn't look like a nice guy. <laughs> and yeah, having this out is going to cost the runner money and cards. One or the other. Especially if he can't get to it. But getting to cards is kind of what the runner does. Huh. I kind of like this card. I, ha I have ideas as to what it can be used for, but I, I do like it. All right. On to the next. Here we have Watchtower. A Cogate, four strength, three, or four to res, three strength, three influence. Search R&D for a card and add it to HQ. Shuffle R&D. And it seems to have some letters and numbers on here. I don't know what that means. That that probably means something in computer speak. Uh, possibly hexadecimal. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I don't have the time to check it out. But if any of you know out there, uh, let me know in the comments below. Yeah. I can dig that. Search R&D for a card. Add it to HQ. Something that doesn't end the run, but... <laughs> sticking that in front of R&D... Could, uh, could make things interesting. Alright, on to the next. Here we have Sacrifice. An operation. Zero credits to play. As an additional cost to play this operation, forfeit an agenda. Remove one bad publicity per agenda point that the forfeited agenda was worth. Gain one credit for each bad publicity removed. Ooh. Now, I've built a Jemison deck, uh, Astronautics deck, that deals with forfeiting agendas and whatnot. And some of the agendas that I have give me bad publicity. A lot of the ice that I have gives me bad publicity when I res it. This would be fantastic. Because with the Overth Protocol, or not even with Overth Protocol, but with uh, Jemison's ability, you play this, forfeit an agenda, remove bad pub, get money, but because you forfeited an agenda, Jemison also triggers, which lets you throw advancement tokens on cards that can be advanced. Mm-hmm. Zero credits to play and one influence. But this would really shine in, uh, in, uh, in Jemison. Oh, yes. And some weird-looking, uh, I don't know if that's some sort of Space Age, uh, communication disc, dish, or maybe a torture rack? I, j I just don't know what that is. But it looks cool. Huh. All right. On to the next and last card. Here we have Self-Adapting Code Wall. A barrier. Three credit res. One strength. No influence. 
it is a neutral. The strength of self-adapting code wall cannot be lowered. End the run. All my best tricks were shrugged right off. I ended up having to send a self-destruct code to the whole server. Wyvern. Ha ha. Self-adapting code wall cannot be lowered. So we have another piece of ice that is not affected by Parasite. The self-adapting code wall. Between that and Lotus Field, getting through will cost money. <laughs> They're going to have to. Hmm. I like it. I like this one a lot. It will, it will be, It would be even better if you could... Ooh, ooh. I've, I've, ooh, I've had an idea. Yeah. I believe there's a card called Patch that lets you boost a piece of ice, the strength of a piece of ice, by like two or something. So putting some self-adapting cold walls in a Wayland deck with Patch and patching it up, you're boosting the strength of it, but because it can't be lowered, <laughs> that makes it even better better. Oh, I like that idea. I may have to put that into practice. Hmm. All right. So that's it for uh, the data pack for station one. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, as always, if you like what I'm doing, please give that like button a tap. Give that subscribe button a tap as well, if you haven't already, so you can be kept apprised of when I do new videos. And throw a comment in the comment section. What do you think of... Uh, Station 1 and the cards that we have in here. Um, do you like them? Do you not? Throw a comment in the comment section. Let me know. Let's get a discussion going. Uh, so do all that. And until next time, my friends, remember, keep running.